evening styrene fanatics, it's Terry here from Smooth Workshop. Right, I've been reviewing some of my earlier um, YouTube video footage and I'm trying to get put together some how-tos uh, and uh, a little technique called an oil pin wash um, was used on my RZ250 build. Now, although it is covered in the full RZ250 build video series, um, some people aren't going to want to watch all of that, so I've decided to um, take some of the old footage and edit it in so that you can see how to perform an oil pin wash. Um, how to choose the colour, what products you need, how to do it, stuff like that. So, in retrospect, I'm making a little how-to video out of footage I've already shot. Um, and I'll put it in my how-to section. So, this will cover how to do an oil pin wash. Over to the video. So, these are the parts that we are going to be doing a pin wash on. And that's all these aluminium parts that I'm just hopefully moving them into shot there. I'll just check in a second once I get this box out of the way. Like you show. Right, let's get the camera in on here. Right. These are all the parts I'm going to be doing the pin wash on. Um, I'll just get myself a pointy stick. So, on the, the rear chain and sprocket, I'm going to do a wee pin wash to highlight these wee bolts and that uh, circular part of the sprocket. Um, on the, the rear hangers, there's recessed bolts and a little bit that I'm going to do a wee uh, pin wash on. Same on this one, uh, just to pick up a little bit more detail, make parts pop out. And um, on this rear brake link rod, just to define some of the the, the border of the parts. Uh, there is actually a tiny little, it's not very well detailed, a little spring in there, but uh, we'll see what happens with that with the pin wash and the crank case casing just to, to make some of the, the lines pop a bit and the two carburetors right so what do we need for this right we need right I'm just gonna get myself a little bit of uh, kitchen roll right so some kitchen roll obviously um, I'm going to be using uh, MIG Abteilung's um, ABT F510 Starship Filth as a colour. It gives a nice, if I can just get the cap off it, a really nice sort of dark grey. And as I say, it's hard to replicate, but it's a mixture. If you're trying to get close to it, it would be a burnt sienna and Payne's grey you would need to mix. But uh, nobody yet's managed to get a perfect match for this. But it's really good for doing uh, like a dark greyish panel line on aluminium parts. So I've got my... Um, my oil that I'm going to be using. <coughs> I've got some uh, odorless thinner that, uh, or terps or terpenoid or terpenol, whatever it is, the American juice, um, for thinning down my oil. Uh, I've got a little mix cup. Uh, these are like the wee shot cups that you get in, uh, at New Year, just a wee plastic shot cup. Um, I've got an empty uh, Tamiya bottle for keeping my, my pin wash um, in. And I have a brush that I use usually only with oils, um, with, a, with a reasonably small tip on it. It's an older brush. And so that's that. So the first thing I've got to do is make up the pin wash. So, without further ado, I will get... Hopefully you're picking this up here. Now, I don't need an awful lot of pin wash for this. Um, yeah, I won't need an awful lot, so I'm just going to take out a little drop of this Starship Filth. Okay, I don't know if you're even picking up the colour there, but it's quite a grotty, grotty grey colour. Let's see if I can get it to go into the bottom of the cup, like so. Um, just a tiny, tiny wee drop. You don't really need a lot. That's why this stuff lasts forever. I'm just going to clear that off my um, paint stirrer. Can we get an idea of colour? It's a right dark, dark colour. Okay, so 
I need this thin enough so that it will flow uh, using capillary action along um, all the recesses but no so thin that it um, doesn't leave any pigment behind right, so I'm just going to try that just now um, this is all, all guesswork for me because I'm quite new at pin washes and all the rest of it so I'm just going to give this a bit of a mix up um, it's got quite a, a greyish hue to it I don't know if you're picking that up at all. I'm just giving that a good wee mix in there. And this is where I'm going to put my still at the side because I'm going to start testing it with a paintbrush next. Now, if it's too thin, I can add more um, oil. And if it's too thick, I can add a little bit more of the Turps or Odalus thinner. Okay, so I'm going to take my paintbrush and I'm going to give us a bit of mix. Now the reason I use, I like the, the MIG oils is it's a particularly fine pigment and I've probably said in another video that it's uh, specifically designed for modelling. Um, now after doing this wash I will have to let it dry. I'm going to give it a good day um, before going over with a clear coat. So I'm just going to try some of this on the side and see how it runs. Actually have I got this right? That's running quite nice there. I'm just touching up against the, the side of the cup and seeing how quickly it runs. So I'm hoping that's going to be enough to run into all the seam lines. Now all these parts have been clear coated uh, to protect the paint underneath. Um, and hopefully I don't spill any of this. So I'm going to start off with the engine part. Now hopefully I'm going to move the camera like and so. I'll tilt it down a bit and hopefully you can see well, my light is not too glaring. I'm just adjusting my lights a bit. Right. Yeah, so what I'm going to try and do here, and this is live, so if it mucks up, it mucks up. I'm just loading up my brush and I'm just going to touch along the seams and as you'll see what's happening is it's running along or hopefully you're seeing this on camera it's running along all the little uh, ridges using capillary action so I'll just dab a bit on here And that's all I want to do really is highlight the webs in the um, in the engine casing. I'm not trying to make them look grimy or dirty or anything. I'm literally just want to pick up uh, bolts. Um, oh, I knew I should have muted my PC and in the webs just to give them a bit of tonal variation. Uh, I'm just dabbing this in and letting it work around. It just gives the illusion of a bit more depth um, around all these um, these ribs on the engine. I don't know if you're picking any of that up. Um, but that's what I'm trying to do. And it just picks up some of the detail and does give an illusion of depth, so it's quite a relatively straightforward thing to do. And I'm not worried about if I overdo it or go in too dark because I can clean some of it up near the surfaces with a cotton bud, and that's a good thing about oil, is it gives you quite a lot of see the capillary action just coming in along all these lines and just adding a bit of emphasis. Um, on what would normally be just a nice shiny aluminium piece. Um, yeah, so in the deeper recesses, if I think I've went too dark, like if I go in, I don't know if you notice that, but it's pulling itself down into the recesses. Um, if it goes too dark, I will just moisten a brush 
with some of the thinner um, wipe it off and, and use the brush to take it back up and all I'm wanting to do is emphasize some depth I don't know if you can you see that working um, and that's what I'm doing with all the parts see there's that little bolt I'll just touch that that weak round there that panel line there that was a good one as I say on the raised parts where I don't want it to be I can buff that back with a with a cotton bud so I'm not being too worried about it um, and there I want to see if it'll come along this one see perfect it's just running along and it's just bringing the definition out on it slightly um, this little bolt here around the bottom of it again this seam line in here that bolt a wee bit along just to give a bit of shadow in there Not worried about going too heavy, as I say, you can just come along later with a cotton bud and go, oh, that was a bit heavy, I'll take that off, and just uh, redo it, which is the beauty of working with oils. Alright, so coming up around onto the top, right, there's a nice wee bit there, and there. I could possibly have used a finer brush, but this is just an old brush that I've been using with oils, and see the wee bolt there. And it's just wicking its way around all these parts, uh, adding a little bit of emphasis on where the parts are. And it's just creating the illusion of depth. And picking some of the, the parts out. I'm getting quite good at the mix on this. That was quite a good guess. It's actually flowing quite nicely. You see that running along there, and that's just picking up that little seam. Uh, I'll let these dry a bit um, before I start cleaning them back or wicking them up, just to let the tarps. See, it's picking up all the... Hopefully you're picking all this up on camera. Um, it's wicking along all the seam lines, um, and just adding just that touch more definition. That's really actually coming up a lot better than I anticipated. Um, now it's coming up in all these parts and it's just bringing them out. Um, so you can show where the angles are and all that kind of thing. A wee dab in there. And that's it just... As soon as you dab it, the capillary action draws it right along. Um, and all the seams. And it's just really to create an illusion of something that isn't there. Um a little bit heavier on here. And as I say the beauty of the oil is you can just keep going round and, and adding more, taking some away. You can see the capillary drawing that one along there. Add more, taking it away as you as you desire. Uh, and you've got quite a lot of time to clean this stuff up. So that's given me the effect that I want. Oh, missed that wee line there. And it really is. Just adding that. Oh, they're shouting in the background there. Oh, insolent 12 year old. Right, so... Whilst they're having a little shout to themselves, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work around uh, all the other parts and then uh, we'll cut back. Okay, so I'll speak to you in a bit. Bye. Hiya guys, welcome back. Smooth watch up. Terry here. Right, in that last clip I'd, I, I'd started off doing the pin wash with uh, Mig Ab Tai Long's Starship Filth. And it's, uh, just trying to see if you can get a colour here in this. It's like a, a nice grey. Can we get just try to see if you can get a wee hint of the colour by swishing it about in what's left in the bottle. Yeah. So it's gave me the effect that I want. I've got a series of, and I've got all the parts here, and I'm going to let these all sit and dry for a day. Now, I'm just going to flash up an image. Now, this image shows most of the aluminium parts. Um, 
on the bottom row, uh, showing the two hangers, the crankcase, the two carburetors, and just up from that, uh, you can see the chain and sprocket set. Um, this was uh, before the oil pin wash, it had just been sprayed with aluminium and clear coated. And the image I'm just going to flash up now, that's all the parts um, on the paper after their, their pin wash. You might pick up some of the detail on it. Um, and the next picture is close up on the crankcase uh, and the hangers. And you can just see where the oil pin wash has just popped out those little bolts, those, those little um, lines and everything on it that uh, normally are just shiny, shiny, uh, shiny, just looks like plastic, eh? So that's, let's give it a bit more depth and realism. Uh, this image I'm just going to flash up is the two carburetors, uh, the difference on them with the pin wash, how it's popped out all the all the joins and where, where dirt would collect in a carburetor. Um, they're going to get lacquered, there's a couple of bits to detail paint. The one on the left has got a, a choke button to do, uh, which is a big circle up to the top left. And you'll see two round dots uh, in the middle of the carb. The bottom one on both of the carbs is the idle adjustment screw and I'll be doing them in a a sort of brassy goldy colour. Um, and just onto the last picture, uh, just round about the, the actual main uh, drive sprocket where it's picked up the two rings um, in the centre of the sprocket and the four little bolts. And that's just been picked up with a pin wash. Um, so that's the images. Um, so yeah, I've got to let them dry for a day. Um, and they'll all get clear coated and then I'll uh, detail paint what I need to detail paint on the forks. Uh, and then I'll, I'll need to detail paint on the rear um, fork hangers, uh, obviously the rubber um, foot peg and, and things like that. Um, it really did come up nice on this little link, link rod as well, which didn't quite come up in any of the, the, the main pictures, but that's that. Well guys, hopefully my editing's worked <laughs> and I've managed to make it a little bit understandable. That's basically how to do an oil pin wash uh, on a metallic subject. Uh, Starship Filth is a nice oil paint to use. You can use other paints, ordinary oil paints, etc. That's what I had to hand. Obviously, if you're going to do a pin wash on a green or a brown or whatever, you want to go slightly darker than the brown that's there or slightly darker than the green that's there. But on metallics, Starship Filth is ideal. So I hope you found this uh, informative. Uh, any questions? Just comment in the, the comment section below. That way I know what you need more info on. Um, so this is a wee how-to from footage I've already shot and hopefully find it useful. Terry from Spruce Workshop. See you later.